Hi, I'm Jason Larson, Technical Business Development Manager for Radwell International. And today is video number two of our how-to series. And today we're gonna to be talking about AC variable frequency drives, and more specifically, field troubleshooting of those drives. We're gonna go over some general generic troubleshooting and uh, overview of uh, next steps. So why don't we just jump right in? So this uh, variable frequency drive is, um, this is a, a Dan Foss drive that's using uh, HVAC applications. And we want to go over some general troubleshooting ideas here. So the first thing that we obviously want to talk about is safety. These things are generally powered by 240 or 480 volts AC, uh, which can be very dangerous. So we want to make sure that whenever you're um, having your hands near the, the power terminals, you obviously want to have the power off and check yourself to make sure that the power is definitely off. Um, don't ever take someone's word for it. Uh, check yourself. I've seen people get hurt out in the field. They've gotten shocked um, and it, it's not a pretty sight. So obviously always check yourself 100%. Make sure that breakers are turned off, disconnects are turned on or off and uh, double check if you guys have a lockout tag out safety program make sure that that's in place and that breakers are locked out and tagged out and also notify somebody i always uh, make sure that we're notifying somebody that uh, we're turning power off so that way somebody doesn't um, accidentally think you know a breaker tripped or something and, and turn it back on while you're working on equipment so obviously lock out tag out make sure the power is turned off and notify somebody as well one additional thing i want to add is making sure that your bus supply is completely dead before moving forward. On the bottom side of this drive and the inside, there's what they call bus capacitors that stores voltage. And, it, and we've seen instances where the bus supply can, can be stored for a very long period of time. So we just wanna make sure before we move forward that these terminals right here, labeled DC plus and DC minus, sometimes you'll see them labeled bus, that they're completely dead. So you wanna take your voltmeter, put it on DC and check. Make sure that that is 100% dead. That is, um, a, a, it, can be, it can be deadly. So you wanna make sure that that's 100% zero volts before moving forward. The first thing that we'll do, obviously, is we wanna prepare ourselves for um, whatever we're, we're working on. Um, I always obviously like to have documentation available. That's the first thing I always look for is, is uh, manuals and documentation. Familiarize yourself with the equipment. Obviously, if you can, familiarize yourself with the equipment beforehand. I always like to print out a maintenance, diagnostics, and troubleshooting guide and have it available inside the cabinet in advance of any particular failure. That's always the best case scenario because we all know when a drive goes down, or a PLC or an HMI goes down, it's always a mad rush to get that equipment up and running and, and it always seems like a frantic uh, um, you know, environment. So having that documentation readily available in advance of the failure is always a, a good idea. Always try and take a few minutes, familiarize yourself with the equipment um, before um, something goes wrong. Preventative maintenance should always be uh, preventative, obviously. So just a couple of things that uh, we want to have available to us is, is any documentation or manuals. AC, DC voltmeter is always a good idea to have uh, available. Wire markers, if, they're not, or if, you're, if your wires are not already marked, you're always going to want to do that. And, and um, the ability to take photographs of any wiring or uh, special configuration jumpers or anything like that, always take photographs of that in advance of, of, of removing any, any wires or terminals or anything like that. The first thing that we're, we're going to want to do is check the drive diagnostics. Now this particular drive has an HMI screen on it that's going to be able to give you some in pretty, pretty in-depth diagnostics. Um, uh, some of the older uh, drives may be as simple as a, an overcurrent LED or something of that nature, um, but you're always going to want to try and check the diagnostics first before we do anything else. Um, the second thing I always like to do is a, is a visual inspection. I know it seems basic, but let's take a look at, at the particular um, installation. Is it dusty? Is it dirty? Are there clogged filters? Or are there bad fans? Um, just take a look. 
take a look close around and see if there's anything that's that's out of place. Um, we've seen multiple times where there's clogged heat sinks or there's fans that are just plugged up with debris. Uh, things of that nature can cause um, the drive to completely shut down. So we're going to want to do it. obviously a visual inspection, check the drive's diagnostics, and then that should help us uh, point us in the right direction as to as to where we're going to go. After we check the drive's diagnostics and, and, and do a visual inspection, the first thing I always like to check is the mechanical installation of the, of the motor. We're gonna wanna check to make sure that the motor's shaft is free turning. We don't have any mechanical issues. We're gonna eliminate that complete side of it first. The vast majority of the times, generally speaking, drives are, are fairly reliable and um, you may have a mechanical issue, a, a gearbox that's going bad, a bad bearing in the, in the motor, um, something that, that may be mechanically overloading that motor. You're gonna to wanna to check that first before we uh, start diving in and think it's the drive that's the problem. I always tend to think it's the mechanical side of it first before the electrical side of it. So once, once we've uh, eliminated the mechanical side of the equation, we check the diagnostics. Obviously, the, one of the first things we wanna do is identify all of our incoming leads here. Um, we wanna just make sure that we're very familiar with what is the incoming power, what is the outgoing uh, power to the motor, and then we have our, our, our bus supply here. Depending on what the fault is, sometimes these drives will have an incoming power source and a separate control voltage. So if let's just say if you're not getting any power out to the motor, your control supply may be okay, but your uh, incoming high voltage uh, may not be there. We want to we want to check the AC incoming supply with our our meter here. So basically, what we're going to want to do is make sure our meter is set to AC, and we're going to put across L1 and L2, and make sure we have either 240 or 480. Some drives are 120, but that's pretty rare. Um, just make sure that your incoming AC supply is what you're expecting it to be. So you're gonna to wanna to go from L1 to L2, L1 to L3, L2 to L3, and basically check every single combination down the line and make sure that you have um, balanced uh, AC incoming supply. So depending on what the, the fault is, is where we're gonna turn next. If we're having an issue where we're blowing fuses, the first thing I do is I disconnect the, the output. Um, on this particular drive, it's labeled U, V, and W. Disconnect the, the motor and the load. That will eliminate any cables or anything of that nature. Let's disconnect that, um, and we'll, we'll try again and see if we still have the same fault of overcurrent or um, you know tripped breakers or uh, blowing fuses and things like that. So once we've disconnected the load, we're gonna go back and, and, and try the drive again and, and see if uh, we still have that same fault, just further eliminating the, the mechanical, the further end of the, of the installation. Next thing that we're gonna wanna do is, uh, depending on what the fault is, if we have uh, blown fuses, tripped breakers, uh, overcurrent, things of that nature, we can uh, check the AC incoming side of the, of the drive. So we're gonna take our meter put it on the ohm setting, and we're gonna check the input block of the drive. So it should be reading, you know, somewhere in that nature, uh, 50,000 up to um, almost an open circuit. What we're looking for is a short. So if you see this, zero ohms, we know, we, we know the more than likely there's a problem inside the drive. Right, so we're going to want to check the same thing L1 to L2, L2 to L3, and L3 to L1. Check every combination, make sure you don't have any shorts on the incoming side. Right, so that's an easy check that you can do. If you find that it's shorted, give us a call, we'll certainly be there to help you um, repair it and replace your input block or um, whatever the uh, whatever's causing that fault. But down in the video. Uh, description there'll be a link to some documentation on step-by-step -step guide on how to check um, an input diode or an output block but I'll go over the the sequence very basically so you're going to want to get your volt your um, multimeter and put it on uh, diode drop right and then you're going to follow the sequence 
uh, listed in the in the document. You're gonna put the positive lead of your multimeter, right? Positive lead of the multimeter onto the negative supply of the bus. And then we're gonna start with L1, L2, and L3. And make sure that we're gonna see between 0.3 and 0.65 volts. We're basically checking that diode further, making sure that the diode is turning on fully. And then if that works, everything's good. Move on to T1, T2, and T3. On this particular drive, it's labeled U, V, and W, but it's the same terminal. Everything on this drive checks good. But this, this document will give you step-by-step -step guide to help you determine if it's the drive or if it's something else. Just to wrap it up, obviously we went over just a couple of very basic steps on VFD troubleshooting. We have a dedicated team here on VFD repairs and installation, so if you need help troubleshooting your drive, feel free to give us a call. We'll get you in contact with a VFD engineer uh, who will help you troubleshoot shoot your drive further. In addition to that, always keep in mind we, we do have a lot of spare pieces and parts, boards, IGBT modules, capacitors, things like that to help you uh, field repair your drive if you need that. For more information, head to radwell.com or connect with us on social media.